So I think we should start, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Wait, wait, wait. My chair, my chair. Oh, uh, please allow me to just speak some brief about this workshop before we start officially about the journey to modular world. Uh,今天呢,其实是一个非常好的机会啊,就是我们是从荷兰,阿姆斯特丹邀请到了Modular Yang 有这样一个机会我们能够和黑油音乐超级黑胶工厂我们一起来去联合举办这样的一个 我们今天讲的内容呢，其实是在十月底的时候呢，就这块内容啊，就是在全球最大的啊电子音乐峰会，就Amsterdam Welcome, Anna Martinova, aka Tupa Dusha. So, thank you. I'll hand over this stage to Anna for the following session. So, Anna, please. Thank you. Th thank you, Max. Thank you guys so much for coming and welcome to the modular world. Uh, today we're going to have a workshop around this remarkable sound science that I would call it this way. And I would love to invite you to explore this new, relatively new type of activity, which will help you in case if you are a music producer, if you want to express yourself artistically as a musician, also if you want simply study how the physics of, of sound is actually working and you're curious about how actually the sound is operating, how actually the whole thing is happening. Also, if you would like to meditate on sound and actually sometimes maybe you feel anxious and you want to calm down yourself, for that purpose, modular can also serve you um, a tool of meditation. Besides that, uh, modular also teaches you how to um, search other ways of strategy in life because when you start patching, when you start routing the signal and the system is allowing you to find alternative ways of reaching different destinations and different goals, your brain automatically requires to think into multiple dimensions. So in my world, in my perspective, being busy with that throughout significant amount of time in my life, I discovered that modular is not just about synthesizers and how they are actually working. It's way more than that. And it helped me to reshape my thinking in many aspects of my life. So I would like to introduce tonight uh, this um, activity to you. And I would like to uh, guide you through 
uh, very basic, very beginning aspects of uh, working with a modular synthesizer. And I would like to show you how you can achieve different musical genres. I will gladly, sh gladly share how I personally approach the machine and what I expect from the machine and why I had this specific choice of modules. So we will start from very zero ground, like knowing nothing, and we will end up, uh, hopefully you guys will come back home tonight and you would say, yes, it was useful. I did learn a lot today. So that, that would be my, uh, my biggest compliment of the night. <laughs> So uh, let me introduce you to the project that we've been creating over the last six years. Since 2018, uh, there was an idea to create a school about Aurorec, which never existed before. Because whenever I entered the world of live performing myself, I was completely disorientated. You know, there was a lot of YouTube videos like with pre-patched, um, sounding very interesting, and complex explanations. I couldn't understand anything. And for me, it was a question number one. Okay, so where would be the starting point, the reference point, zero point, from where I can begin, you know, to learn this language of musical science, even if I don't have any background whatsoever. So that was my goal, to actually target um, people who would love to enter modular, and they don't know how. So therefore, um, of course, I had also teachers in my way. You know, Pete Johnston is one of my biggest mentors. Jakobo is also one of my teachers. And uh, the fact that I was DJing for 23 years before, and so I had like some specific vision and expectation from the music. And that helped me all together, you know, to form this method of uh, learning sound synthesis from scratch also without any classical musical education. So you're not expected to have uh, 12 years uh, violin playing or drums or whatever the choice of your uh, instrument is. You can literally enter the, in the um, uh, sound synthesis without uh, knowing, just by a strong will, let's put it this way. So, um, Briefly about what's gonna the content of the workshop. So we will I will introduce about the school and then we will go through um, physics. So we will go through the structure of master class. We have around one and a half two hours. I hope we will be able to cover as much as possible, and we will go through physics of sound and introduction into Aurorec format, basic building blocks basically scratching point, synthesis methods, complex patch performance logic, and some other technical aspect. So this is the actual system in Modular Moon Amsterdam. This is the complete program in one box. So this yellow case over there is a reflection of the book. Every aspect of the book is represented in the physical world with this according module. So for example, if we're talking about signal generators like VCO or samplers, we would have them presented. If we talk about control voltages like sequencer, trigger sequencer, we would have them in the system. If we talk about something more complex already called synthesis methods, we would have them in our box as well. So to actually learn modular from scratch, it is completely enough to have a box like that. Of course, today we have myriads of new inventions and very complex modules. For example, like a simulator or a nerd sequencer would be like already upper level control of the voice. And that would be a next chapter of your journey when after you learned basics, you would be actually creating your own machine, your own synthesizer, your own vision will be reflected to the device that is going to be used for music creation. Tell me if I speak too fast, like if you have any questions, just don't hesitate, you know, stop me and say, hey, can you check, can you explain this? Yeah, just don't hesitate, be yourself, uh, talk to me, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes, we wrote a book about this, uh, which 
actually targets the people from very beginning. Uh, I will pass it on so you can see for yourself how it looks like. The book is a series of exercises that will help you to understand the basics of sound synthesis, that will help you to understand how any other synthesizer out there is operating, even if it is pre-wired machine like, like Moog or Roland or even Electron, any, any other devices. So the synthesis has sort of a common ground from where that starts. And from that common ground, every other maker creating their own devices, competing with each other and also offering you a wide range of possibilities in musical world. So for you as a musician, it's important to understand which tool will be your tool because there's so many out there, yeah? So that therefore, the school and uh, sort of breaking down any given synthesizer to individual building blocks helps you to understand which tool doing what and which of them would be your tool, yeah? So therefore, we go sort of like back to basics, let's put it this way. The book is translated to Spanish language as well, and with it, it became first book on that topic in history of music for LATAM countries, Latin American countries, for which we are uh, very proud. It's a milestone for us because we want to target people, different languages, different cultures to know, to learn modular from scratch and to be, you know, to be happy, to interchange, to explore each other in you maybe make music together, you know, unite together. So modular is absolutely the, the tool to, to communicate. Um, so uh, I travel a lot. I did workshops in Ecuador. Uh, uh, that would be a community in, in um, Quito. It's a capital city of Ecuador. That would be, uh, the top would be the Croatia uh, Modern Festival. So we also go to festivals and explain about this. And that would be the Netherlands. Uh, there, would, there is a, a uh, the movie about uh, women in sound synthesis. So I was like representing that. Um, so yeah, so we basically operate on different continents and we gradually expand. Our next target is Brazil after a uh, Russian um, platform. So we bring it, we try, we try to target the, the world. <laughs> Let's put it this way. This is my friend Jakobo, who is also my te our second teacher at uh, Modular Moon Amsterdam, who was also my teacher at some point. So in Amsterdam, we have uh, two major educators. Uh, myself and Jacobo, and we have an intern, uh, Brian. This is uh, a brand called, this is not rocket science, is a Dutch brand who would give a workshop on envelope generators. So sometimes we are inviting pre uh, makers of the modules uh, to come over and show their um, inventions. This is Mexico City. Uh, Andres is running Modular Moon Mexico. Uh, we launched the workshop, introduction workshop there as well. Um, this year I went there first time actually for to actually check the school, but they were already operating for a couple of years before. And um, so, yeah, they have also school, school, you know, people get the book, people get uh, exercises, people get homework, you know, you really go to school with that. And during COVID times, they were doing online practices. So they were already operating for like two years in a row before I could actually come over due to all this like restrictions and stuff like that. But in Mexico, it was booming big time. Like they had like huge rooms and they were doing a lot, way, way more in, than I, in Amsterdam, I would say. I was like surprised by that. This is Santiago, so we also open section in uh, Chile, uh, Latin America. So people are very enthusiastic, they're very open, and they also gather like a rock bands in a way, and they merge modular with like um, 
you know, normal instruments, so it's, they have fun. <laughs> so that's Santiago, the um, Valdo, the person with a zero written, is uh, the, the head of uh, Modromo and Santiago. So yeah, they have a lot of fun. This is Goa in India, so we tried out uh, to run one cycle of classes in India, and we're currently opening one in Bangalore, so next, uh, after China, I'm going to India to launch the integration of the sec section over there. So we're opening up very different uh, countries in that sense. Uh, in Goa was a little experiment because Goa, maybe you know, it's a more like a party place. So it was a bit difficult for people to focus and actually study, but we made that as well. So uh, about me, I started as a DJ. Uh, I play Dark Forest and Dark Progressive Psychedelic Trons. Um, I DJ already since the age of 18 and then I started to produce music. Uh, for 10 years I produce ambient, down tempo, I write songs, sometimes I write techno, more like dancing stuff and sometimes I play also and produce uh, dark forest and dark progressive like more fast and um, you know, dancing music. So my uh, expertise is more like both worlds. So I like calm music and I like very not calm music. So, you know, there's two of me. So we do, so I, uh, with modular, you see this uh, system here. So I travel with that and I play also with a jazz drummer from Germany. So it is absolutely possible for you to combine modular with acoustic uh, performers which is also an, an interesting fun altogether. Uh, so, um, so that's, this is the introduction of Mojo Moon. And uh, right now, I think we should dive in into the basic building blocks. From there, um, I will introduce some of the synthesis methods. We will start patching and Hopefully you will be able, I would really love that, that you would come over yourself eventually by the end of the workshop and try to patch as well. And I will guide you, Max and me, we will guide you yeah, through the systems. If you brought an instrument yourself, uh, please don't hesitate to bring it and, you know, show us your skills. <laughs> 就是大家现场有没有带自己的设备过来的朋友 Anna, please continue um, Do you think we should translate? Uh, maybe it would be more interesting for people if, because maybe some people don't understand OK, OK So, um, 我来那个刚才总结一下这个刚才Anna讲的一些东西啊 就是 mm -hmm. 因为刚才安娜其实也是讲啊，就莫吉的莫文，他其实是一个遍布全球的这样一个组织。他总部实际上是在荷兰的阿姆斯特丹，然后现在分支机构呢，其实是在呃墨西哥城，就Mexico uh, City，呃，Moscow, uh, Liverpool, I believe，and，Santiago，Santiago，啊，新七里啊，就智利、圣地亚哥都是首都。然后呢，在in uh, India，Bangalore，对，班加罗尔那边也有一个新的一个分支机构。然后的话其实这样弄的话其实我们他们的整个的目标其实是遍布全球的这样的体系所以呢他们这次其实来到中国的话一方面也是作为我们多一次茶馆特邀的艺人另外一方面其实也是看后面有机会的话能够在中国
对，这个就是目录啊，就是关于整一个这个课程的，就是这个这本书，这个呃、uh, ，is there a text outline？ There is a text, yes,、yeah. it's a textbook, and、yeah. there is also a platform with videos connected to the. Okay, okay. Uh, no worry. I think、uh, maybe some, if we they encounter some hard, you know, some hard words, I will. Emphasize that word, so you can just make it fluent. Yeah. Okay. Continue, yeah. So we go through physics of sound. We're gonna go through given system. The given system is a very、um, basic standard building block system from where you can start. We have, of course, a specific system in the book from where we started the education, but. Today we have a representation of similar type of the system、uh, created by Modular Kiat, so they gladly sponsored this、um, workshop, and we're gonna explore it together, one building block per time, and you're gonna be able also to patch yourself to try out the system. Okay. 对，就是大家可以看到前面的那一个呃，就是装置啊，它其实有两个装置，上面的话呢是 Anna 她自己的一个 system， 自己的一个系统。下面这个木盒子呢，是来自我们这一次的这个赞助商，叫 Modular Kiat 啊，就待会儿大家可以拿这个贴纸啊，然后呢，来去就有什么东西可以贴一下。就是这套系统呢，其实是 Modular Kiat， 它其实啊，来自杭州的一个中国的一个艺术家，叫杨子涛，他自己联合创造的这样的一个模块合成器的一个厂牌。然后呢 ，Kiat 的这个系统呢，是他们。这一次啊，就是为了专门这次是想做啊，就是特地制作出来的这样一个系统。这系统它有一个代号叫叫 MKSS 644啊，它意思就是 Modular Kiat Starter System， 就是入门系统， 6 4 HP 宽度， 4 U 的这样的一个高度啊，它的这样的一个系统。然后呢，这次呢，其实还有一个东西啊，就是刚才忘了跟大家讲啊，就是后面呢。这我们的赞助方啊，就是 Modular Key 啊，他们其实是有一个 T 恤，所以呢，到后面的话呢，啊，然后 Anna， 然后呢去会选择一位啊现场的这样一个观众朋友，把这件很珍贵的一个 T 恤送给大家，好吧？好 ，Anna continue。So um this system is produced in China with a very talented group of people from Hangzhou. I think they are from all over China. And they developed this system with its own unique features, but we can still follow the basics through that system. And I will tell you the nuances when、uh, the system has its own uniqueness. But don't be hesitated; it absolutely is connected to the structure of the book because it's just a basic starting up system. Okay.、Uh, The、uh, program has、um, starting point when we talk about physics of sound, and then we go to the sound、uh, generating signals、uh, modules that are called VCO and LFO. Then we go to the signal modifiers VCF, envelope generator, and VCA. From there, we go to the controlling type of signals that are our CV trigger, arpeggiator, sequencer, and from there we're gonna start to actually patch. So technically, you just need to learn basic five modules. You'll need to explore how they operate from scratch. I always call them like five elephants of sound synthesis because these five building blocks they are presented in any synthesizer out there. 对，就是刚才安娜讲啊，就是我们一般在模块合成器啊，包括整一个减法合成器的这样的一个构造里面，它有几个比较重要的一个动作。第一个呢叫做 VCO，VCO VCO 的英文名叫做 Voltage Control Oscillator， 也叫叫做压控啊压控震荡器，这是这是就是我们能够听到那个声音它的一个核心关键。然后它里面会有很多波形啊，有一些我们这最典型的就是那种锯齿波，就 saw wave 啊，还有一些像那个像 sine 波，就是正弦波，还有 square wave 方波。就这样的一个波，它是这个我们在合成器里面能听到声音的一个关键，就是叫叫 VCO 这个单元。然后第二个单元的话，就叫 VCF 啊 ，VCF 就是我们能听到那个就声音明亮的那变化。这个在很多其实包括在碟机里面啊，其实也会有啊，就是
，它有个叫 filter 的这样装置滤波，高通滤波跟低通滤波，就它是能够调整啊，就是我们的这个听感的强弱的，所以它是一个很重要的这个音色的一个制作的一个工具，就 VCF。第二个呢叫做 VCA， 第三个 VCA。VCA 的全称的话叫，他们所谓叫 VC 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 都是叫做 Voltage Control， 由电压来去控制的这样的一个单元。所以呢，一个是 O O 的话就是 Oscillator 振荡器 ，F 就是 Filter 滤波 ，A 的话叫 Amplifier。Amplifier VCA Amplifier 就放大器，它是用来控制什么东西呢？控制音量的大小跟高低的。啊，就什么意思呢？就是我们一个声音的话，比如像就像鼓啊，它是一个咚。对吧？咚，它后面就没了，对吧？前面大，后面小，它是这样的一个声音的一个控制。那这个东西一般就是怎么来去控制呢？一般就是要由 VCA 来去控制，对吧？那但是 VCA 呢，我们大家会想一个问题啊，就这个东西，我们怎么样去定它的这样的一个一个线呢？就把就这个强声音它是强弱，它是有个 voltage， 对吧？它应该是有个线，那这些线是用什么去画呢？这就叫 EG，EG EG 叫 envelope generator， 就是这个线啊，对吧 ？How you draw the curve？ 对吧？这个这个 curve 的话，就是我们说的叫包络 envelope generator， 就发声器。就这个东西呢，就是用来触发我们这个包络的一个装置。所以呢，这个其实是我们比较重要的一个单元。另外还有一个，就是在我们会经常听到一个东西叫 LFO， 可能大家有听到低频振荡器 low frequency oscillator。就这个 oscillator 和 VCO oscillator 本质上都是 oscillator 啊，但是呢，它的因为它的这个 frequency range。is different， 它的那个它的那个就频率高低不一样，是吧？高频的我们能够听到的东西啊，我们叫做 VCO， 我们不能听到的专门用来调制，它也可以画线，就是它有定期的一个时钟，就嗡嗡嗡这样的一个东西，频率很低，我们耳朵基本听不到，就听就基本上会低于二十二赫兹的这样的一个东西，我们把它称为叫 LFO，LFO 跟 EG 啊 e m l o p generator 就是用来啊做这个画线包络的这样的一个。也很重要的一个装置，所以呢，就是这五个单元，就 basic five block VCO、VCF、VCA、EG and L4 basic five module 啊、uh, ，can be can be a full full fledged synth voice. Yeah. So、um, this is usually a program of the school,、uh, just with starting point and ending point. Ending ending point ending point is always the why when we solder the module and we actually learn how they operate from within. So we go quite deep, and that will help you to build up confidence with your system when you literally will know your machine from within. Okay, so let's start with physics of sound. So, whenever I explain physics of sound, you might also know this topic. I always start with the、uh, fact that we are human beings, and as a human beings, we have our hearing system, which is actually a part of bio biological self-protection process. So, let's say when you are outside and you hear the car roaming passing by you, you will hear it and you will automate automatically react. So, biologically speaking, as human beings, we have a range of frequencies which we can perceive. Our hearing is perceiving the sounds from outside. Our ears are breaking down the incoming signal into individual sine waves, and then all this information is going into the brain, and the brain is interpreting.、Mm, I hear music. I hear a dog barking. I hear my cat. I hear the car alarm. Maybe I should run. Maybe I should freeze. I hear my child crying. Maybe I should give him milk. So this is a part of our、um, species, which you know operates by default 24/7. Actually, you know, you hear the voice of the person you love, and you calm down. You know everything is fine. This person is near, etc. So I always start from this、uh, aspect. 对，就刚刚安娜讲的，就是这是一个声学物理的这样一个关键的几个几个单词啊。它这里它其实有几个维度啊。第一个维度是 pitch， pitch 就音调，就音高。我们经常会听到一个叫什么四百赫兹啊，是吧？四百四十赫兹，四百三十二赫兹，它是什么？是中央 A 大调 A 调，中央 A。C 四啊 ，C 四，所以这就叫 pitch，pitch pitch 就 frequency。然后呢，第二个呢叫 timbre，timbre timbre 就音色
啊，音色就比如像我们听到的一些钢琴的声音，咚咚咚咚，还有像像底鼓咚咚咚，这就是 timbre。然后第三个呢，就是刚才的话，我们有有在我们的响度感知上比较关键，叫 dynamics 动态范围。这一点，如果说大家去做过录音棚啊或者其他相关的工作，对这个东西应该感触很深。就是什么样的这样一个音频范围，它是可以包容在里面的，这就是叫做我们这个 dynamics。然后呢，下面的话其实还有几个东西，一个叫 waveform 啊 ，waveform waveform 它它里面的话，它会和你的这样一个谐音相关啊 ，harmonics 谐音。或者叫泛音啊，就泛音，就一个一个对音，它一直就低，就会很难听。因为我们为了能听到一些好听的钢琴的一些音调呢，就是因为它有泛音，就是在除了一些中央的 C 是吧 C 四之外的一些 P 级的一些声音，会使得它声音变得很好听，所以就叫 harmonics。所以它大概是这样一个内容。没了。So、uh, long story short, we have、uh, our sound, the sounds out there have the pitch that would be. Uh, and repetition per time, cycles per second. So let's say I speak very, very high pitch, and then I can go low, 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 lower, right? So for me as a musician, it is important information because when I compose music, I need different type of instruments. Let's say my bass line would be really low and bassy, and then my lead would be somewhere in the middle, something, you know, and then I would have like high pitch tone birdies. Or something like that. So, as a musician, this is my tools. This is my. This is the information I need to combine artistic sound expression that is going to travel through space and time. Next, what I need to learn here is dynamics. That is loudness of individual voice within the mix. I can speak very loud, or I can speak very soft, or I can speak. You cannot hear me. But all this is also my tools, my um, in my necessary uh, aspects I need to control as a musician. Okay. The、uh, next we need to keep in mind a、uh, timbre. Timbre would be, you know, there is difference when the piano is playing and the bass line is playing and the clarinet is playing, and we hear those wonderful instruments and we can identify. Oh, this is a piano playing. Oh, this is a A、clarinet or a saxophone. So, how does actually that happens? That piano sounds like a piano, and the clarinet sounds like a clarinet. That is due to another、uh, phenomena of nature called overtones. Overtones or harmonics. Every different sound has overtone content. Overtones are individual sine waves within the waveform. Mathematical relation of it detects the timbre. Okay, I think Max already explained our tones a bit.、Uh, so、um, this is the major, most important information we need to know as a musician, right? Do you have a question? 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 Ah, then, stage, the audience, if there are any questions, you can always ask. So、uh, the next thing, of course, we need changes over time because, of course, a song has different、uh, soundscape. Something is louder. Something goes to silence. Something is booming. Something is very soft. As a musician, you need to understand this principle. And、uh, another thing, what we must remember: the frequency range we are operating within as humans. As human beings, is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That means it's a range of frequencies that we can perceive, and within this range of frequencies, we are creating music. We are expressing ourselves because other human beings are also operating within this range, so they will be able to understand and perceive this range adequately. And another、uh, most common thing we need to remember about the loudness that. Zero decibel is not a not a silence. Okay, zero decibel would be a reference point from where we can start and add the loudness. So let's say if this loudness of my voice right now would be zero decibel measure in in the measurement tool, if I will go louder and add plus six decibel, that means I will go louder. If I go softer and go into minus six decibel, we will go softer. Okay, so 
this is the most confusing thing. Most of the time people think that zero, zero decibel would be silence. No, minus infinite decibel would be silence. Okay? So, um, this is the major physics aspects of the sound. Okay? We can continue. If you guys have any questions here, just let me know, okay? Just, just ask. All right, we go next. Error rec. So, error rec is a format, okay? Uh, within this format, there is specific rules that we have to uh, follow. These rules, this environment allows many makers in the world, many manufacturers in the world, unite under the same roof, let's put it this way. So let's say if I buy a module in Canada and it, it is marked Aurorex standard, in my mind I know what it means. That means the height of the module is going to be fit to the case that I'm using. Okay, so the box that I'm using in Aurorex format has specific measurement relatively the height of the module and the width of the module would be u units 3u or 1u or and uh, a width of the modules would be more measured in hp okay so we have 1u versus 3u height hp width we have 3.5 millimeter mono jacks this kind of uh, jacks that are uh, making sure that building blocks are communicating with each other. Okay, so we have outputs and inputs. We need to route the signal. We have electric specifications that the makers have to maintain. It's called minus plus 12 volts. That's the strength of electricity the modular is operating with. with. And we have strength for the control voltages, which would be zero to five volts. I will explain in a bit what that means. Most important for you from here to know is, if you are creating an Aurorex system, you're building for yourself a machine within specific environment. And if you wanted to communicate with other devices, let's say you have a Moog One, and you want to combine those machines, you would need to reduce the signal from MOOG1 in order to process it through the Aurorex system. Okay? Otherwise, you will burn the system because MOOG has very strong electric strength and Aurorex has twi plus, twice to plus minus 12 volts. So this is important aspect you need to, um, to remember in order to uh, patch your setup correct way if you are using other tools as well. For that, of course, there is specific modules called line-in that would reduce the signal automatically, okay? I think it's uh, clear here. We have, we have another uh, spe special input called one volt per octave to feed the melody into an oscillator. I will explain it while patching, but normally it means that the control voltage is spread in a relationship relatively to the frequency of the oscillator. It is easier to explain that during the patch, okay? It's just a unique feature. And control voltages, we have zero to five volts, way more softer signal. Audio signals are very strong, minus plus 10 volts, okay? So there's two types of signals. Audio, very strong, control voltage, very soft, yeah? And one volt per octave for information for the pitch scale, okay? It's not that, I, that you have to literally think every time how much voltage you feed into one volt per octave. It's something you just know one time and then you know how to patch correct the system, all right? Uh, Anna, maybe I summarize in Chinese oh. maybe a few words. Yes, yes. 然后呢是这样的就是这个叫Euroreac 就是 4HP, 2HP, 只是它宽度, width, 宽度 第三个呢, 
，这个东西叫 3.5 毫米的单声道接口，就 TS 线，这就是它的一个跳线，跳线就是它的一个所有信号，包括你的 control voltage， 包括你的音频，都是通过跳线来去解决的。然后呢，这个呢是它的一个电 power， 它的电压的高低啊。就正正的十二伏，还有负的十二伏，所以它其实是有个二十四伏的电视差啊。然后呢，中间可能有一些还有五伏的 five five voltage 的，那是特制的啊。然后呢，这个呢是我们说的这个、嗯、音频信号的这个它的一个电压范围，对吧？有正就正负的十伏的这样一个电压范围。当然，在这个可能在音频里面正多，最一般是正负的五伏啊，就是减减六的 jet decibel 的这样一个。然后 CV 呢，它有几个标准啊。第一个呢，就是叫 unipolar。unipolar 的意思的话，就是指的是单单极，单极就是就是因为大家知道，我们像这个东西啊，就它有双向的，要么有正的十伏跟负的十伏。unipolar 就是单极的，就它只有这一边，没有下面这一边。bipolar 指的是又有上面又有下面，这叫 bipolar 啊。然后呢，这个他们的两个电压值也是不太一样的，就是对于这个 unipolar 单极的来说话，它是十伏。零到十伏，然后呢，对于这个 bipolar 就双极来说话，它是负五伏到正五伏，它是这样。但是它们中间的电势差都是都是五伏。然后呢，这个呢是我们在做这个音调 P 起时候我们的一个关键，就是这个这个我教大家怎么读啊 ？OCT 就是 octave， 大家知道八度对吧？一个八度呢是一伏，所以叫 one voltage per。octave one volts 啊、uh, one volt per octave 就每一个八度它对应的就是一伏，所以它这个呢我们要去 tune 我们的模块 pitch 我们的模块的时候啊，我们就要以这个东西来去 tune pitch。然后最后一点，刚才安娜要讲，就是我们的这样的一个有几个东西可能信号是一样的 ，trig、gate 跟 clock， 它其实是一个方波，这个方波呢它是有个数字数字控制的，零伏零伏它就是关啊，零伏又关 off off 五伏就是 on。它会有一个这样的一个一个高低，所以这个呢，就是整体来说啊，我觉得这一页已经包含了我们在 u r r a c k 模块系统里面要注意的一些事项吧。啊，然后呢，当待当待会的话呢，那个安娜会给大家 more practical 的这样的一些操作，然后后面的话这些东西大家可以慢慢的去消化就好。安娜 ，please。All right. Um, next. We we think we should start with basic building blocks, and this is the roadmap of every synthesizer existing out there. Okay, even not Eurorack type. So Eurorack type is giving you every building block one by one. The maker like Moog or Roland or Korg, they are providing you with complete pre-wired system. These building blocks they are communicating with each other. Pre-wired system already makes sure there is this communication happening. In the Eurorack world, you are the person who's supposed to provide the communication with building blocks, and that gives you a great advantage because you can create a system that your heart would want to be out there. Okay. If the maker is creating a wonderful synthesizer, he is projecting his idea, his vision onto musical device. So synthesizer is an instrument, like a guitar, like a piano. You have to learn it how it works. In Eurorack world, this instrument is sort of dissected into individual parts, and that gives you opportunity to rebuild. The system, with so many different modules created from manufacturers all over the world, with what you can create your own unique system. Okay. So in my case, I have a performance system that allows me to create different styles of music. But to get there, to get to these more complex tools, we must learn the basics. So that would be the roadmap of a very basic system. We always start with a VCO, VCO section, voltage-controlled oscillator. Voltage-controlled oscillator is generating signal. Imagine that as if you are、um, working in a church and you need to create a core, and in your core you have three singers. 
three singers having different beautiful voice, different beautiful timbre. So we can imagine that VCO is that place where those singers sing. Okay, so this is the place where we generate the signal. Uh, and since we are having a constant tone in different pitch, we can control which timbre we are choosing here from the number of timbres. We can choose which pitch we are using from the specific knobs by changing the frequency rate. And we can modify the initial default signal within the block itself. Okay, so this is your voice. From here, the filter, the oscillator is traveling to filter section. Filter section is a place where you can modify whatever you created here, you can modify here. And that gives you advantage in the form of creating new timbre. Because the synthesis work, I'm a sound synthesis, so this is my profession. My profession is about creating existing timbres, replicating them, and creating new timbre. Okay? So I can replicate existing timbre, bass line, or uh, a piano, or a wind. And I can create new, unknown timbres. For that, these two tools, VCO, VCF, and VCA, are my instruments. Okay? So by default, even without the modulation section, you can start with three basic building blocks, VCO, VCF, and VCA. VCF would filter the initial tone. VCA would amplify the initial tone. Application, amplification is about dynamics, loudness, you remember that. VCF is about changing the overtone, meaning changing the timbre. VCO is about generating voice, generating signal, okay? Maybe it's good to translate that. 就刚才其实那个安娜讲的东西，我一开始跟大家去讲的，就是它的这样的一个，我们叫做信号的signal pass，对吧？就是你通过它，你先有个声音啊的这样一个声音，然后呢，经过这个VCF，它会有个对吧？ the change of the color of the tone, the high pass, 高通, 有时候是低 pass, low pass, 就是它有高通低通, 如果它就会可以改变你声音的这个, 就envelope 那吉他、Gitarist,哇哇哇哇哇。那这种哇它怎么来的?哇其实就是有像类似这样的一个东西去调制出来的。所以这个东西其实就是我们在Subtractive Synthesis,就减法的这样的一个合成里面最重要的5Module。So but we can use this to modify other building blocks. So LFO is our modifier. We cannot really hear it, but it can help us to modify our voices, to create new timbres, to achieve specific effects. Envelope generator is a control of the dynamics because every sound has different physical presence. It travels differently through space and time for example, the drum would be a very short, very strong pulse, right? You know how the kick drum is sounding. But if we talk about violin, well, it would be long played, 
sound. So envelope generator helps you to control the signal in that way. Okay, so one more time. Generating constant tone. Filtering it, Ooh, making it softer. Amplifying it, Ooh, making it louder. Adding an envelope generator, woo, 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 making it behave as a drum or as a violin. LFO, you know, modifying that <laughs> very strongly, okay? This is the super, super basic five element of synthesis of sound existing in every synthesizer out there. In Eurorack format, we have them one by one. And uh, above that, there would be a signal control generator. In Eurorack format, that would be a sequencer or a trigger sequencer. We'll get there. It can be a keyboard as well. It can be a push, Ableton push. There is so many different controllers out there. So this is already a choice. By default, this would be the basic synthesis station. Let's put it this way, okay? And we have that all present here, and we're going to learn them one by one right now, okay? Okay, so let's start with VCO and LFO. I would like to invite you to come closer to the system, because we're going to patch. 对对，我们大家可以就是就是挨着更近一点，因为这个待会儿的话，Anna的话她有一个很多很多的这个模块系统，可以讲。然后呢，这边是一个示波器，所以大家可以看到这边它都是的微风在什么样变化的。Anna please. I would like to unpatch everything, so it will be very clear for you how what exactly we are doing. Can someone hold the microphone? Let's get one step back and let's look through the system right now all together. So this is our basic synthesis station. So if we compare with the signal pass over there, you see VCO section over here? So we have here VCO1, this is our VCO1, and VCO2, okay? These two, they are completely identical, all right? We're going to learn them now in great detail. We have our filter section, VCF. This is our VCF1 and VCF2. Yeah, We just have them double. And we have an amplifier section, that is VCA over here. Yeah, you follow that. VCO, VCF, VCA. Okay? And we have a mixing section. Mixing section would go to the speaker. Okay? Beyond that, we have LFO. LFO have a little nuance over here uh, because we have an envelope generator, two envelope generators, so you see the section below uh, the VCA. And one of the envelope generators can be transformed into an LFO. Okay, this is the advantage that the maker of these modules created. This is his personal uh, achievement. Okay, so just remember VCO, VCF, VCA. Envelope generator, LFO. Okay, here we go, five. And we have a random source, random voice source. Today we're not gonna look through that, so we don't overcomplicate today. For the control voltages, so the keyboard over there, we have a sequencer, eight step sequencer over here. All right, so this is our control voltage. So we're gonna look through these basic building modules today. VCO, VCF. VCA, envelope generator, LFO, sequencer. Okay? You, you got it? Do you have any questions? You, you okay? Yeah? Do we need to translate? Is there a... 
对，这这一块就是我们这次的赞助商这个 M K Module Kia 的，他们彻底为我们制作的这样的一块 e u r o r a c k System， 也是他们首次做的这样的一个 e u r o r a c k 整机的这样的一个 Bundle System Bundle。然后呢，刚才我们现在讲的所有东西在这里的 Signal Pass 里面都可以有对应。我们说第一个 V C O V C O 就是这两个模块啊，就数量它可能是一个两个，也可以更多。这个是 V C O， 然后 V C F 呢，它这里也有两个 V C F One、V C F Two。然后呢 ，VCA 这里的话就有一个 VCA， 然后这个 VCA 它是两路的 dual pass 啊 ，dual pass， 所以呢，这个东西它可以同时啊进两个信号进去。然后呢 ，LFO 呢，其实这样 ，LFO 跟 EG 啊 ，envelope generator， 我们把它看作一个东西，就是用来作为调制 modulation 的。那这个东西呢，他们的系统非常巧妙的是什么呢？就是我们先讲 envelope generator 啊，这个东西它可能后面待会安娜跟大家这边讲，就它那个 ADSR、attack decay， 等待会儿可能会讲的更细一些。Later later， Anna will explain。What is ADSR？ 但但是呢，这个东西呢，就相当于因为 EG 它是一个，它是一个包络。如果我们把它循环起来的话，就让它变成 cycle 的这样一个东西啊，它就是一个 LFO。所以呢，它在这个 m o d u l a r Key 这个系统里面，它有一个专门的一个 cycle 的一个 on off 的这样的一个一个按钮啊。当你把它 cycle 打开的时候 ，EG 就变成了 LFO。当你把它关上去的时候呢，它就会有个关，它就是一个 one shot one shot EG。对吧？就这样的一个东西，对吧？所以呢，这两个东西其实这套东西系统已经在上面，这个 signal pass 是比较清晰的。然后呢，刚才那个安娜有讲，就是我们的这个音符 pitch 的高低怎么输出来，这个叫 sequence， sequence 就是这样的一个模块啊，这样。然后它这里还有个很高高端的模块叫那个 random source， 这个可能会 too complicated for today's 啊、uh, class。那这个我们可能就今天不会讲太多，主要可能待会儿安娜就会围绕这几个东西给大家演示 how to patch。OK， 安娜 ，please。Above here we have so-called attenuator, passive attenuator. We have two mixing sections. They are helping us to reduce the strength of a signal, attenuation, and they are helping us to mix the signals together. It's very simple units, very very simple. Okay, but we're gonna focus on five uh, of these today. Okay, let's continue. VCO. This is our VCO1. This is our VCO2. They are completely identical. You see, the outputs of every VCO is marked with a、um, highlighted output. In Eurorack world, everything is output to the input. Okay, always one direction because you are providing electricity to flow. To do that, you need, of course, a bridge. So that would be a bridge. Okay. And you remember, I was explaining that the VCO is that place where you have different voices, different timbres, where you can generate a signal. So, in our case, we have a standard set of waveforms that is triangle, square, and a sawtooth. This is a very, very, very、um, basic standard set of waveforms, default. Alternatively, we must have a so-called sine wave. Which contain only one overtone. For a reason, it's not included here because our filter can behave as a sine wave. Okay, this is a little nuance that every synthesis must know. Okay, so let's、uh, start. Yeah,、uh, Anna, please let me add on one point. Anna、uh, just、uh, put a very important thing about VCF. VCF actually is a sine wave generator. If we put the resonance. To the max. So, 呢，就是这个东西啊，我们其实跟大家有听到或看到，其实底鼓啊，就 kick 啊，很多 kick 它不是用 oscillator 来去做 ，kick 它其实是用是用 VCF 啊。If you if we put the resonance to the max, and we can see the envelope generator with a very booming kick. So kick、啊、usually is made with VCF. Yeah. So Anna, please. Okay, so I'm gonna explain the signal path. I'm gonna take a VCO. I'm gonna take triangle output over here. I'm going to send it to the spectrum analyzer over here. It is so-called spectrum analyzer. The spectrum analyzer shows me the content of overtones. Remember physics of sound? Why timbre of one signal is different than timbre of my voice is different than your voice? Because of the overtone content, yeah. So the same situation over here. The spectrum analyzer can show me the amount of overtones. It is important information for a synthesis because this is how I 
shape and change my timbre. This is how I find timbres that already exist, or how this is how I replicate. So we are in a low frequency, so it's called clicks. choose different waveform. This is a triangle. You can hear the square is very different. You can see it's very different over tone wise. You see it? You see that? Over tones. Over tones are individual sine waves within the waveform that have different loudness. Together they form different timbre. Okay? One voice is different than the other, all right? Our brain is processing all that in real time, our hearing system. Here I can control the pitch. I can change the fine frequency if I need that. This control is the same for every other waveform. So if I take the square, my course is same. We have, we're operating only within this little block at the moment. We take triangle output, the course, fine, are all same. Okay? So remember, VCO is that place where three or more waveforms are generated. By default, it is usually three, starting from triangle, square, sawtooth. Yeah, this is super basic. More expensive tools, more advanced oscillators have inverted, so has a random form, you know, it has uh, pulse and square only and all kind of different variations. But to be honest, to have three only will give you already great advantage in creating signal, in creating new timbres, okay? For the fact that VCO has so-called frequency modulation, so you can modulate the frequency and that would create a new timbre for you, okay? So we can, we're gonna try that. Frequency modulation is a method of synthesis. First we learn the basics, triangle, square, sawtooth, and then we can modify the frequency and the maker creates an input for that. It's called FM, FM synthesis, okay? We can modify the timbre within the module itself. We don't need to have any external modules to make modulation within the VCO, all right? So let's try to modulate. We have triangle. I'm gonna take the saw. I'm gonna feed the FM input. And you hear? Okay, so we had Any questions about that? No? Should we translate that? Uh, yeah, so, uh, okay. 它是怎么那个那个FM那边是,它是把那个锯齿波又连到那个FM那边。This um, friend asked uh, how the FM synthesis, how they interact with each other, like, because, you know, VCO is the same. Actually, VCO is an FM source, and VCO2 is an FM destination. So we can see our default waveform, triangle, okay? You see it here on the oscillator. We can change the frequency by changing the rate. The rate means repetition. The higher is the rate, the higher is the pitch. However, frequency modulation modulates the rate, so it is already the next step. First we have the rate, and then we can 
wave feeding another signal into the frequency modulation input over here. Okay. We have attenuator to control the strength of modulation.对对对，我我再补充一下，就刚刚讲这个，就是呃，这个FM新设施在这个这个东西啊，其实特别在模拟合成器里面的话，就是我们一个呢，就是你的背调制源，就是比如我们其实现在的这样信号呢，其实是用
That's the major philosophy here. Okay. Next thing what we need to pay attention to is so-called one volt per octave input. One volt per octave input. This is where our melody is living. Okay. I'm going to remove everything. I'm just going to leave the triangle again. And I'm going to set the... This is my sequencer section. still change the pitch, I can adjust the tune, and I can control the, no the actual melody over here, yeah? So the sequencer here, the one that I have here, generates eight steps that are transcribed in one volt per octave relationship within the oscillator, okay? So this one volt per octave input is very special. This is where the melody is living. Okay, so remember forever, it's a default rule. One volt per octave is the place where you create a melody. Okay, to feed the melody into this input, of course, you need to have external device like a sequencer. changes is the octave. Yeah? So therefore, one volt per octave. Okay? So this could be my bass line. Alright? So, and now let's apply a frequency modulation, just for fun. What will happen? Let's change the pitch. is a very very basic very starting point the moment you're gonna build up your personal system you start with an oscillator and when you're gonna google that you know I want to buy a oscillator you will have a number of makers you know presenting different oscillators and the moment you will look at the front panel and you will see, ah, okay, triangle, square, sawtooth, oh, interesting, sine wave, hmm, you know. Then you will be able to choose how many voices you're going to be operating with, okay? So this is the major, major beginning point, all right? Okay, is that clear here? There is aspect called pulse width, and so frequency modulation input can be linear or exponential. That means... Thank you. That means that the energy that is floating into the f modulation of the frequency can go two different ways, linearly or uh, exponentially. Okay? That's just a way of energy to float in. And that also have different result every time. Okay? So this oscillator doesn't have the variety regarding that. We have only one default frequency modulation input. Whenever you're going to buy an oscillator and you will see exponential linear uh, uh, exponential frequency modulation input, linear frequency modulation input. That means you have double as much amount of possibilities to generate different timbres. Okay, so it's a preference. Pulse width modulation and pulse width, uh, pulse width, 
and pulse width modulation is another extra features. And uh, they are not presented here, but they are related to square type of the waveform only because of its shape. Okay, so the square has a width and we can control the width. The moment we're controlling the width, we are again changing the timbre. So all of that is about changing the timbre all the time. Okay? Soft and hard se sequence uh, synchronization is about uh, synchronizing a phase of every waveform. So let's say you're using two different waveforms. The phase means that they are starting and ending in the same time. And if you have a hard sync, they're going to be synced ideally. If you have a soft sync, you're going to have a slight um, decay, delay. Not delay, a slight. Uh, so one phase would, would, let's say, start over here and another in time would start a little bit later, yeah? And that is another option to give you a new timbre. All of that about creating timbres, unknown ones and repl replicating existing ones, okay? And again, remember, LFO is the same as VCO, only LFO is operating below the audio range. So they're completely identical. LFO is also generating a number of waveforms. You can apply frequency modulation there. These days you can even apply one volt per octave on the LFO, which never happened before in the industry. So these days they give you even more option to modify the modifier. LFO is your modifier. And every input within the LFO, they're completely identical as VCO. Only that is below the audio range and that is your advantage to create even more timbres, okay? So these two building blocks are there to create variety of voices, all right? Okay, let's continue. Are you guys uh, having fun? Yeah, <laughs> you happy? Yeah. All right, um, let me know if something is not clear. So what we were just doing, I was sending a VCO to the VCA. Uh, actually, I was sending a VCO to the uh, spectrum analyzer and from the spectrum analyzer to a mixture. It's almost just the same, okay? I was just amplifying the signal, all right? I, I didn't use the VCA yet, okay? But this is a very standard um, sending VCO to here, yeah, to listen, okay? Next building block called filter, VCF, is this one. So the filter is as, as follows. Let's go to the spectrum analyzer again. So let's choose, remember our uh, VCO, let's, we have triangle, square, and saw. All of them have different overtone content. You remember that. These overtones within the filter can be um, softened. Okay? The filter is that place that can amplify overtones around the cutoff point or reduce them. And that again is changing the timbre. It's all about changing the timbre. All right? So let's take a sawtooth. Let's listen pure sawtooth right now. You see the overtone content over here, classic situation. All right. And now I'm going to take the, the same waveform and send it into the filter. This is my filter section over here. This is my input for the audio signal. This is my output. I have frequency control, meaning cutoff knob, and I have a resonance control when the filter starts to self-resonating. For both of them, I have modulation inputs and attenuators to control the modulation amount, okay? So let's send it to the filter over here. From the filter, we take the output of the filter. We're gonna go here, off, open the loudness. Send the signal in. Oh no, that's that's the attenuator. So you see the overtone content changed, timbre changed as well. Okay, so the filter is that place where it is possible. It is called substructive synthesis method. Okay, so 
if frequency modulation is a FM synthesis method living within the oscillator, subtractive synthesis method is living within the filter. All right, this is where that that process is happening, and we can amplify. It. You see, they are changing in the loud. Yeah. So with that, the timbre change. How about we use 
also an effect in between. I have an effect uh, here. So we're going to feed the input over here into the effect, into the reverberator. And from our reverberator, we're going to go to the output. different branders. This is Move. It has its own circuit and the patch paint with the inputs and the outputs and I can send them and cross-connect completely different systems. I'm gonna take the pitch output over here. Let's see what will happen. Let's see the frequencies. Frequency modulation usually does this pitch. and lower. Yeah. If you use it as a 50 hertz, 50, 60 hertz, you can use it as a sub oscillator to generate like this super low bass line. You know, everybody would get 
impress <laughs> this kind of thing. But whenever we're using it, and, and below, so he goes below 50 hertz, below, you know, 10 hertz, infinite below, actually. And it's still there. And when we're using it as an audio form, we as humans cannot hear it, but it's still there. So this energy can be used to modulate the generated signal. For example, the frequency, the rate of the default uh, waveform that you are using. Yeah. Okay? Did I answer the question? Yeah? How, that, how exactly that happens? Yes, we cannot hear LFO, but the energy is still there. Electricity is still there. That means this electricity we can send into the initial electricity. Uh, but is this just the filter? Yeah. LFO. Oh, no, 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 the VCF. Within the filter, LFO would open the cutoff slope. Within the filter, there is a thing called cutoff slope, like a mountain. Yeah. This mountain can be opened. It's moving across the spectrum that we are hearing, and we can make it move faster or slower. An LFO? Yeah. So let's say your LFO has this kind of rate. So the cutoff uh, curve of the filter would open like this through the spectrum. So he will pass through all this overtone within the waveform and close them down. Open, close them down, open, close. If your LFO is higher rate, the opening will be like that. Yeah. So the, the speed of the overtones that are going to be heard in a moment of time will be depending on the opening of the filter. Okay. okay. And that would change the timbre again. Again, yeah? yeah so, so it's all about like these overtones. You can see them here. And basically, we are playing with them. Yeah. Overtones are individual sine waves at specific frequency within any existing waveform out there. My voice has probably its own mathematical you know, relationship between the overtones. Mm. And of course, it depends. Maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm angry, maybe I'm like yeah. was smoking too much and my voice got, you know, you got a little bit noise. Yeah, but overtones are still going to be there. And our brain would break them down to individual ones. Of course, you will hear me as my voice. And you would say, hey, Anna, you went to a party last night. What happened to your voice, you know? Yeah. So because of, you hear that our tone content of my voice changed. And uh, the spectrum analyzer allows us to see all this, this content. As a synthesis, we are working with this. We're working with our tones because today we have tools that allow us to make them louder, to make them softer, to make them behave this way, jump around, open up through filter, increasing some overtones, reducing others. With the additive synthesis method, there is a, um, a tool that shows you this content and you can manually, literally make them louder or softer. Okay? okay. So this is what the synthesis is about about working with this overtone content. All right? Clear about the filters? Yeah? And the filter is this place where this overtone are filtered out, basically. Yeah? And we... And the cutoff can show on the... No, the, we would need a... Um, a spectrum analyzer that allows us to see uh, the the cutoff okay. point. Of course, here I hear, I listen. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. there is graphic representation if you're using Ableton, and there is equalizer. Equalizer is actually a filter, triple filter. Triple yeah, you can you can actually you know you can modify the curve manually. Okay. This curve you see in an equalizer, it's actually a filter. Yeah, only you can manually control it. Here we are controlling it with the control voltage, okay. with, with external energy. Yeah, I, I got it. Yeah? yeah thanks. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> we continue? We continue, we continue. Yeah? yeah? All right. So this is what we were just doing right now. VCO to the filter to the amplifier, and then I added a, uh, a re reverberator on top, some effect. VCA and envelope generator. Okay, let's remove everything again and start the patch from scratch so it will be easier to understand and we're not confused. Okay, let me quickly unpatch everything. I think I will uh, leave the, f the effect on because it's easier to perceive 
the sound because effect is softens a little bit the raw signal um yeah because otherwise it's i understand it's a little bit hard to hear the electric buzz all the time but i mean this is the the essence yeah all the other tools like like filters equalizers delays reverbs softeners limiters reducers they all basically carve the initial buzz yeah so imagine you're a sculptor sculpturist you have a big stone and you want to create a, you know a beautiful woman from this or a fish whatever so you need tools to to do that so see it the same vco would be your stone a raw signal where you can already generate many different timbres already and then the filter and equalization, all the other tools, attenuation, VCA, envelope generator, they are your stones, your tools to create the shape. Yes, regarding filtering, yes. However, sometimes you need to add. Yeah, so sometimes you need to glue some stone back. Maybe you made a mistake and cut out too much, you know? So you need to understand where exactly this process is happening to control the, the result, okay? So uh, VCA, it's a voltage controlled amplifier. This is when we are talking about dynamics. So everything we were talking about so far is about the timbre, yeah, about the overtones and the content of the individual overtones. Now we're gonna talk about the loudness because you, the dynamics, yeah. The dynamics is measured in decibel and you know, in music and also in the world, some sounds are louder, some are softer, you know, all this all, all the time changes. So we need to have a tool where that is possible. Initially, by default, VCA is a mixture place. It's a place where you can mix down different control voltages to achieve specific goal. For example, you want the, the um, sequence sound more percussive percussively. So you hear that when there is percussion, it's a short, short pulses, short signals. But we have constant woo -woo -woo -woo, endless tone. So how do we achieve that? How do we make the silent gaps to make sure that we have percussion on the output? This is where this process can be done. It's called VCA. And to carve the playback time, we need envelope generator. Envelope attack, decay, sustain, and release is this place where you can control the travel of the signal through space and time. And you can carve it. Attack would be the beginning of the signal, very sharp. Decay would be the energy going up. Sustain is when the energy is top, receiving the top, top level of its own. Release would be the place where the signal will go down. So we have controls for that. Normal classic envelope generator has attack, decay, sustain, and release. Okay. We have here slightly different envelope generator, which also can behave as an LFO. We have attack and decay controls. All right. To make sure that the envelope generator is running, we need to trigger it. Trigger would be the moment when the envelope starts to open up and close down. So we need to make a link between time with time, space, sound development, okay? Because music can, travels through space and time, yeah? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, again, replicate the, so you see, I explained that VCA can be our mixing section. VCA can attenuate control voltages, make them softer or stronger through the CV input. So uh, in our VCA, that would be CV input. Input A would be audio signal input. CV input would be control voltage input. And the output is where we're going to send to the effect processing. So this is a dual VCA. We have one and two sections. So we can process two voices per time within this unit only. Yeah. Envelope generator we have over here is also dual. We have envelope generator attack decay one and attack decay two. They are completely identical sections. Okay. We have trigger input over here that is marked by the trigger pulse. 
So we need to feed the trigger in it in order to start an envelope to run. And we need to turn it off from the looping mode, otherwise it behaves as an LFO. So this is a little bit advanced envelope generator, unusual one. It offers you also an LFO function. Classically, we would have just a DSR and that's it. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. We're gonna take again our VCO. We're gonna take triangle waveform. We are going to we're not going to touch a filter at this point. Yeah, we just explore a VCA. We send it to the VCA A. This is our section we're operating within. Input A. Output, we have to send to here. So you see there is no, there is no signal coming through because I need to let it through. And I think that that's the, so I'm letting it through. I'm letting it in. Let's listen. Yeah, we hear it. Let's remove the effect. Classic situation. So next to what I need to do, I need to send an envelope generator. Here is the, I'm going to use this one. This is my section I'm going to use. Envelope A. This is my output over here. I'm going to close down all the controls. I'm going to set it to the envelope mode. I'm going to close down the attenuator over here. I'm going to take the output, send it to the VCA input. So in order to make it run, I need to activate an envelope generator. Right now I'm having a tuck tuck tuck. The moment I'm opening the decay, the length of the playback of the sound is longer. So this can be done within the VCA section. VCA is this place that is making this process possible. Yeah? And an envelope generator is the place where I'm controlling how short the impulse is going to be. So for example, if I'm going to send a sequence again back, the, oh, one volt per octave input. Okay, so this is where I'm controlling the dynamics. I can also add the initial signal. This is my audio signal, triangle. I'm going to unpatch it. I'm going to send it to the filter. Input over here. This is the filter <laughs> I'm using. From the filter, I'm going to take the output and feed it back to the input over here. OK. 
we are going to open the loudness. So you hear the filter change the timbre. Wait. Lost. This is uh, one for Rotary over here. This one. This happens when you do the reverse uh, patching. Okay, let's see. Let's open the decay. And, ah, here we go. No, this one. basically three to five building blocks and we're already having so many different timbres, so many different variations, so many controls. So this is the classic analog synthesis as it is. Okay? So um, do you have any questions around that? You're okay? <laughs> so, um, ooh, you happy guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think uh, we should call it a night. Um, so today we went through a very, very beginning point. Uh, I can quickly uh, uh, introduce you to the system that I'm using like super, super quick because I think we're already good for tonight. And I, I, what do you think, Max? Like I think I, I don't want to overload your head as well because I know it's a lot of information to process. Tonight you're gonna be sleeping and like, oh, what the filter is doing, you know? <laughs> so uh, it's, it's normal. Um, just a quick brief introduction, how far you can go with that, okay? So relatively control voltages I'm using a NERD sequencer. So I'm controlling, I'm creating all the controls in this device over here. I'm using two samplers, so I'm using also sampling as a synthesis method. 
from a simulator as a phase modulation sampler and Tenton Music. It allows me a very onboard control in the moment of time. I also automate some of the voices. I do some sketches there within the system. I'm using fully subtractive analog system called DFAM, which is almost just the same as this one. A yeah, full analog device that allows me to have minimal baselines kind of generator. And I'm using polyphonic oscillator, which is a new thing in a monophonic world because normally uh, analog is monophonic. But we are growing and we have polyphony now presented in, in our rec. This is called polycinematic. It's an entire synthesizer on its own. We have envelope generator over here. We have a filter section. We have a VCO section. And we have a little effect on board. I'm grouping all the signals into one place. I process them in real time. My uh, major core, I love granular synthesis. So I granulate the signal, I play with, like, my real-time composing consists with affecting, granulating. So before doing that, of course, I prepare some sketches that I'm going to be playing back with. I prepare the structure. If I'm targeting a minimal techno music, then that would be a techno, four on four beats. You know, if I'm playing ambient or if I'm playing with someone, then it will be a little bit different. This system completely allows me to target many different styles of music. You can see from my Instagram, so like it's like I can't choose, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I, I do this and then that, that very fast, then very slow, you know. It's like that's the thing about Eurorack, that it just unleashes your creativity. And at some point you're like, wow, it's so beautiful. Like, I don't know what, what to choose. It's, it's, it's too much, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and then the, all the signals after the processing are going through the filter uh, before going to the output. So I'm using also extra filtering section over here to reduce the signals a bit and sort of glue them together. I think I'm going to use an, an, an equalizer eventually. So I think I'm going to swap the filter to equalization eventually. And I'm using a couple of effect processors here, very tiny little ones in 1U format and uh, extra triggering signal, hi-hat, headphone. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so that's my system. OK, thank you. Many thanks to Anna Martinova. And uh, I believe today's workshop will be a, your start point to modular world. And um, yes, I think it is for now. So today, we can talk about the part and we'll end. 但是我知道你们都想要听什么东西 So if you want to listen to Anna Martinova to Tuva Tusha's live set Give me some noise So please leave this stage to you Yeah. No, 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 no. So, yeah, so, Modular live set, Tatsi的一个魅力在哪儿。这个可能也是大家可能平时里面在DJ Ah, so Anna, let us know if you are ready. Yes. Uh, actually, I think I would like to uh, maybe live closer. Yeah. So we can still continue the, the learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you are DJing, you want everybody crowd. Yeah, yes, exactly. And uh, please allow me to adjust the camera. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anna, thank you, everyone here. So, you know, today, we, this, we, this, we, this, we, 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 配合那种素养的职业性啊，让我觉得印象很深刻。然后后面的话，我们多了一次茶馆啊，肯定会按周期、按季度一定会邀请啊，像类似安娜这样，对吧？就是又有实力，对吧？然后呢，又有能力，又有技术，长得又好看的啊，来中国，然后呢，来到深圳，然后特别在深圳，跟大家会做一些这样类似的 workshop， 好吧？感谢大家。然后呢，最后的话是这样的，呃 ，first thing first of all， 安娜 ，pick one of your audience that you like。That's your favorite, and send the T-shirt. That pick one. That's it. That's it. Yes, that's it. So Anna, let us know who is your favorite guy today. Favorite girl. So um, everyone is favorite. Normally we don't do the difference, but I would like to stimulate more women in the world of synthesizers because <laughs> I think <laughs> I think it's going to be more fun for everyone. And yes, it's still majorly a lot of boys in there. And yes, and I do need friends that are also girls. <laughs> so I would like to give to you the T-shirt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Welcome to the modular world. Welcome to modular world. Now, any 获奖感言 Uh, um, I'm so exciting. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. And uh, you are so beautiful. <laughs> okay, okay. 然后呢，呃、uh, ，Let me wrap up today. 嗯、um, ，所以呢，今天其实这样的就是。呃，我们所有的内容啊，包括我们小奖品，其实在现场的一些贴纸啊，啊，包括那个小的一些纪念册，大家都可以拿走。但是这个东西呢，大家如果想要去买的话，那个我们到时候我们会有一个 China dedicated price， China de de dedicated price。然后这本书的话，大家刚刚也都浏览了啊。然后后面如果大家想要去购买的话呢，到可以联系我。然后的话，到时候我我可以对吧，统计一个量。然后到时候因为这本书它原产地是在。荷兰，所以到时候它是要进口的，所以到时候可能会统计一个量，到时候我们去，包括线上的朋友啊、观众啊，我们会把它进口到国内来。然后另外的话呢，就是像我们今天的呃，要感谢我们的一个赞助商啊 m o d u l a k i a t 啊，这个就是大家有看到的，就是这套系统，就是他们这次组建的第一套系统。然后其实的话，今天将大家能听到它的确实音色啊，其实是。我相信应该是能够能够超过很多人的一个预期，包括我自己的预期啊。所以这套系统呢，我也是跟到厂商那边，其实也拿到一个特工价啊。如果说大家有兴趣的话呢，对吧？到时候大家可以加到就是模块乌嘎的合成器的群里面啊。到时候要去咨询一个价格，它的一个帮斗价格要比他们分散的价格要要便宜一些。反正这套东西呢，我了解下来总的价格啊不会特别贵，不会特别贵。然后呢，它里面其实可以做很多 voice。啊，然后到时候结束之后的话，我我给我我我会给大家演示一下这东西应该怎么样去用啊，这个东西。然后，另外的话也请大家同时啊就关注啊，就是多里斯茶馆的啊，就是公众号啊，公众号，然后视频号，然后呢也欢迎大家 follow 啊，我们后面的这个就是活动，因为我们其实整个 Anna 的这个 China t o u r has not ended yet， we still have two very important performance next weekend 啊。The first half is maybe in seventeen. 十七号我们在广州，啊，然后十八号呢，啊 ，eighteen we are in Hong Kong. 我们在十八号我们在香港的 Animator Audio， 那是整个中国大中华区最大的模块合成器的这个商店。到时候我们会在那里会有一个 show， 也是由我们多利斯 Sound System 在那边去呈现。也欢迎大家如果有空啊，有时间啊，也过来捧捧场，好吧？感谢大家，感谢大家。行行行，那我们今天的内容可能就差不多了。然后也感谢线上的朋友。Anna, do you know how many people watch our workshop today? I mean, online. You guess it. How many? I don't know. 
guess a almost a number. Twenty, thirty. Uh, let's say say that number. Two thousand. Two thousand viewer. Yeah. And um, the maximum at the same time. At maximum, if I can remember correctly, like uh, one hundred and fifty uh, at the same time. So I think today's workshop is very successful. Oh yeah, give you give yourself a applause. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. 好，那么话就话不多说，我们今天的这个活动就到此结束。Anna, say hi, say goodbye, bye bye.